heard him say very clearly, loudly, that this is your heart. Also, he said, this is your week. He said, this is your day. And this is your hour. This is your hour of lifting. No man, no organization, no devil can stop it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before the end of today, which is 12 midnight, that long awaited testimony will reach your hand. No one in this church shall be called sick. From today, you shall begin to prosper in the dimension of this commission. Joy unspeakable, full of glory, shall be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we bless your name. We thank you for engracing every one of us. We thank you for answer to prayers. We thank you for what you are set to do this hour. Lord, we give you all the glory. We thank you for this third day. We thank you for raising everyone here. We thank you for empowering us here. We give you glory. Even by your word tonight, let each one return back home transformed. Let everyone return back home satisfied. Let your name be glorified. Take all the glory. Blessed be your name. In the precious name of Jesus. Let the people that are truly blessed by God shout a louder amen. amen. Put those wonderful hands together for the Lord and please be seated. It is my year of breaking limit. I welcome you on behalf of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, to this 15th day in our 21 day prayer and fasting. And I have the assurance of heaven that the God you are looking for will show up tonight. The exhortation line for this week is we serve a God of sudden visitation. We serve a God of sudden visitation. We have established the fact that prayer is a two-way communication line. We pray to God and he also answers us. Apart from receiving answer from the altar of prayer, one of the major things we need to do while praying is to establish a relationship. Once there is a relationship in place, prayer becomes very, very easy. When a man and a woman are married, by reason of staying together, the relationship begins to get stronger. And by the day, you discover that even before the woman asks anything, the man already knows what she wants and makes it available by reason of the relationship that has been established. In the same way, when we establish our relationship with God, answers locate us cheaply. What happens to us in the process of prayer is more valuable than the material things we receive from it. What happens to us when we pray is much more important than what we receive in return as material things. Not only that, what we become matters more than what we possess. That's why we must give in everything in this prayer and fasting season. I'd like us to know that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, they are one. According to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 7. The Holy Ghost, therefore, is in charge of the affairs of the kingdom of God on the earth today. He is the one in charge. And that's why the scripture declares in John chapter 14, reading verse 16 to 17. John chapter 14, 16 to 17. 
Say, and I will pray the Father, Jesus speaking, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you. For how long? Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So the Holy Spirit is in you. The Holy Spirit is in me. He maketh intercession for us. He knows what we need. He knows how to communicate our requests to God. So the Holy Ghost is a God of sudden visitation. He's a God of sudden visitation. We saw that in the book of Malachi chapter 3, reading from verse 1 to 4. The scripture declares there, Malachi chapter 3, reading from verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, say the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in the former years. So the Holy Spirit has that responsibility, has that duty to prepare us before the sudden visitation of the Almighty. That was what the, the apostles were doing in Acts chapter 2. The Bible said, reading from verse 1, after Jesus Christ told them to tarry in Jerusalem, the Bible said they were all together in the upper room, 120 of them. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, say suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse 4, and they were all filled. How many of them? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As they were praying, as they were praying, before the sudden visitation, before the sudden intervention, intercession has been on. And that's what we are doing. That's what we are doing in this 21 day prayer and fasting. And we have been told a signal by the Holy Spirit through his servant, the apostle over this commission, that there's going to be a sudden visitation in your life today. Yeah. All through this week. Expect the mighty visitation of the Almighty. So the altar of prayer and fasting is a platform for encounter with divine visitation. Isaiah 58, reading verse 6 and 9, the Bible speaking there, it says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? So there is a God kind of fast. There is a fast that is proclaimed, ordained by the Lord. And what is this fast designed to do? He said to lose the bands of wickedness, all the forces of darkness that are held you captive. You are due to be married, but they say you won't marry. He said this fast is ordained to lose those bands. To undo the heavy burdens, the family challenges that are weighing you down. To let the oppressed go free and that you may do what? Break every yoke. So there is no way you can end this fasting and remain at the same level, sir. It's impossible. You can't be fasting for three weeks and still remain on the same spot. No, sir. This fast is designed, ordained, programmed by the forces in heaven to humiliate the 
camp of the devil. And verse 9, he said, Then shall your light break forth. That is the resolution. There will be a way out. Then shall your light break forth as the morning, and thy hell shall spring forth speedily. That is, everything weighing your head down will be dissolved. Then, then, so there is a build up. There is a build up to the then. There is a build up to the sudden. There is a build up. And this is the very last week. So, God will show up this week. I like us to know that our God is a God of sudden visitation. We can see that in the life of the patriarchs of old. Abraham, in Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3, the Bible said, the Lord appeared to Abraham suddenly. Abraham was just doing his thing and the Lord appeared and told him to get out of his country from his kindred, from his father's house, to a land that he was going to show him. And the Lord told him, I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse him that curse you. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. That was the promise. And Abraham kept following God. And in Genesis chapter 24, verse 1, we were told there, after consistent following, that Abraham was old, 175, and were stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? According to the word he said. What does divine visitation offer us? Very quickly. Number one, it offers spiritual transformation. It offers spiritual transformation. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. But we all, there is no exception. As long as everybody is fasting, we are part of this all. We all. But we all. But we all. In that place where we read in Acts chapter 2 and verse 2, the Bible said, And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house, and they were all filled. There was no exception, sir. Everybody in the upper room, they, and the, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they began to manifest strangely. But we all, as we behold him as in a glass, the glory of the law, we are changed. So the altar of prayer is the altar of change. It's the altar of answers. We are changed to what? The same image, that is the image of God from glory to glory. How? By the spirit of the law. Remember we said God, Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are one. So they are working together to accomplish divine assignment in our lives. And that's why I know that this 21 day prayer and fasting will terminate every shame in your life. It will put an end to every form of barrenness. It will humiliate every poverty around you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. What does this divine visitation offer us? Number two, it engenders fulfillment of prophecy. It will bring to pass what God has said. Remember, God promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 18, verse 9 to 10. He said, I'm going to bless you. He said, where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, she's in the tent. And the Lord said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And look, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah had it in the tent door, which was behind him. Sarah began to laugh when she had that declaration. But God fulfilled that prophecy. In Genesis 21, verse 1 to 6, we're told there, and the Lord visited Sarah as he said. 
God is visiting somebody here this week. God is visiting you this week. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Please take note. Before God will perform, he will speak. That's why God has told you and I that this year we are breaking limits. God said it to Sarah. She had, she was laughing. But when the time was fully come, the Lord visited her and did unto Sarah as he had said. And the Lord gave unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham his son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken of him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah brought to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And verse 6, And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. Not that they will laugh at me, they will laugh with me. This week, people will laugh with you. Yeah. Everyone that has ever mocked you, they will lift up their hands to celebrate you. Yeah. So, this week, expect a 360 degree turnaround. Yeah. Expect what? A 360 degree turnaround. 360, sir. 360. You were walking before with your foot. The next morning, you are riding your chauffeur driven car. You were believing God for a job before, but now you are employing people. Yeah. Uh, that, that was a 360 degree turn. Joseph was in the prison one night, and the next morning he was a prime minister. Not that he got a job. Prime minister. Only God can do that. What God alone can do is what will happen in your life this week. Yeah. I'd like you therefore to rise up on your feet. You are going to believe and pray for that turn around. This is your week of divine visitation divine visitation. Lift up your voice and begin to pray right now. Lord, it is my week of sudden visitation. Heaven is responding in my direction this week. Heaven is smiling upon me this week. That divine visitation that changed the story of Sarah. Lord, I line up myself for it this week. I don't know how it will happen, but I know it will happen. Align myself up this hour. This is the third week of this prayer and fasting. Lord, I've been waiting upon you. Your words say, they that wait upon you, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faith. My Father, visit me this week. Divinely visit me this week. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I'm trusting you for a 360 degree turnaround in my career, in my business, in my health, in my finances, in my marriage, in my relationship. Lord God Almighty, I'm trusting you for a 360 degree turnaround. 360 degree turnaround. Let it take place in my life this week. Pray fervently tonight. Pray fervently tonight. For that sudden visitation. Press into it. It must happen. Beginning from tonight. The heavens must open. In the name of Jesus. It is my week. It is my week. It is my week. Even today. Let there be practical, traceable testimonies to back up the fasting for this day. In the mighty name of Jesus. While that prayer is going on, you are here tonight, you are not born again. I'd like to pray for you specially. You know you are not born again. You want to surrender your life to Jesus. You are tired of struggling. You are tired of living that false life. I'd like to give you this opportunity tonight. I want to believe very strongly that you are not here by accident. God brought you here in order for him to reorganize, repackage your life. Wherever you are, you want to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior tonight. I'd like you to just quickly come to the altar here. It's your night. He's going to give you a new beginning. He's going to change your story for good. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, you want to surrender your life to Jesus. You are tired of struggling. You want him to take over the battles of your life. I'd like you to come to the altar here in the name of Jesus Christ. Also, you are here 
Maybe you give your life to Jesus. Along the line, you backslid it. You return back to the world. You fell into sin. But you want to rededicate your life. I'd like you to come out again this night. It is your night. Jesus is waiting to receive you. He wants to receive you tonight as one of those that must make heaven. Wherever you are, quickly come to the altar. Every other person, Lord, as I partake of this communion, let me encounter divine visitation. Let, and then come to that sickness, that pain, that burden in my heart, that oppression of the devil, that issue that has not made me to rest. Lord, as I partake of your flesh and blood to them, your peace that passes every human understanding. Let it begin to flow in me. In the name of Jesus Christ. My Father, my Lord, and my God. Every issue of concern around me. As I partake of this flesh and blood. My Lord and my God. Convert them into testimonies. To the glory and to the praise of your holy name. Father, we thank you.